fruit, my fruit, my fruit, my fruit. Okay, dude, hold on a second. Put the light on. Let's shine some light on this subject. There we go. Yeah, I need a fork. There's my dishes, guys. <laughs> it's always nice to look at that, right? That's funny. Let's see. Water. I don't need a drink right now. Do not need a drink right this second. Let's flip her back around. Well, I figured we'd just sit and chat today, guys, for a little bit. Stevie went back to school. I got some food. Oh, I'm sorry, Doobie. I'm sorry. I stepped in Doobie's tail. Poor Doobie. Hey, Rosalie. How are you? My precious little lady. All right. So I'm going to sit in my living room. Where, okay, let me show you where I'm sitting. This is the best comfy chair. I'm doing pretty good, Rosalie. I figured I'd sit and see. I want to, I'm always out at night, and I was like, you know what? I've got the time of the day. Oh, yo, here's the deal. i got to keep my phone plugged in because I'm going to get situated, guys. It's not going to be all crazy like this, but I just figured I'd start. Hey, Mary, how are you? All right. Let me sit this up here and see. I'm going to eat with you guys, okay? I don't know. I hope I don't trigger anybody. It's not like keto. It's not keto friendly. Oh, Mary, I'm sorry. What are you sick with? All that's going around right now, I'm telling you. All kind of stuff going around right now. I love you. Take care of yourself, okay? The flu, Stevie had it. I'm telling you what. Stevie had the flu. It was bad. She was out of school for over a week. She was out of school for a week and a day. What are your symptoms? I got strawberries, guys. Strawberries right now are 99 cents at Aldi. And you know, I'll grab mine out of the dumpster. But I was in Aldi. I didn't have any strawberries. Um, They look good. So I was like, I'm going to get them while the getting's good. Oops. Whoop. Get that. Oh, that's what I was going to do, guys. I'm going to open the door. I forgot. Because it's raining, we're having a thunderstorm here, and I thought, ooh, that's kind of relaxing. Can you guys hear the rain? Oh, Mary, I'm sorry. Same with Stevie. That's what she had. Mmm. And she had a fever. Mary, I'm sorry. Hang in there. You're going to come out of it. You're going to come out of it. Bust your heart. I, a few times... Okay. Yeah. Stevie. Stevie's temperature got up to over 103. To point where she don't normally get temperatures, guys. Stevie's not a huge. I have a temperature. It doesn't happen. This last time, mm-hmm. I took her right to the ER. Cause when she was a baby, this happened when she was a baby. Um, my sister came over, and Sean came home. And it was like, hey, Stevie's hot. And I didn't recognize that she was warm. And so I always get a little nervous with her fever. And I heard that stuff. Um, I don't know whether it's true or not. And everybody's different, so it could affect people differently. But I heard that. What's that stuff that you take that like combats the flu? Or, like, works against the flu. Yeah, that's what they said. She told me at the ER, she said we could prescribe the Tamiflu. But she said there's really, she said it's not, actually, um, basically she told me it kind of can make it worse. So... I was like, we ain't doing all that. Train. I'm like, 
like hungry today. I got blueberries too, guys. Hi, painting houses from New Zealand. Welcome. Wow, New Zealand. That is so cool. Huh? Yeah. Wow. Loves to bake. Welcome. Let me say hi to everybody. Rosalie's in the house. Mary's in the house. We've got loves to bake in the house. Welcome, everyone. Painting houses. Welcome. Diving with kids. Good morning. Uh, it's okay. I don't use that. It doesn't work. Forgot to say good morning. Oh, good morning to bake. What was that? 425? I can't. Hold on. My little button's in front of it. It'll go down. My little button. Mm. Wow. What is it here? Like 10 something. Wow. That is so different. I, I just. I ponder on that a lot. Like we're here. There's people in front of us in the future. There's people behind us in the past. But we all only really have now. Right? So like, it's just, it's a lot. I'm like, wow, sometimes. I like to think about it. Let's see. Wow, 9.30 a.m. in Texas. Wow. Yeah, we're having a thunderstorm. We got a thunderstorm morning, Rosalie. Until 10.23 or 10.32. I can't remember which one. But yeah. Yeah, have been windy. Wow, Mary. There's people from all over. I love that. So what's going on with everybody? Is there anything anybody wants to talk about? Anybody got any questions or anything? Wow. We're having a heat wave. A tropical heat wave. Well, I hope you have a good day painting with houses. Hey, girl. Aw, Angel. What a sweetie. I'm so glad you came. I'm eating food, guys. I'm sorry if it triggers anybody. But I had to eat and I wanted to do a mukbang. So. What does it say? Hold on. I can't see. Yeah, like, I just, I don't even know anymore, guys. With my eating, I'm just trying to, like, not think about it at all. And just do it. All I do is think about what I want to eat. Like, what it is that I, that I want. And then... I try not to think about it anymore. I just, I, I let the impulse of what, I just, I don't think about it because I've been on so many diets in my life. I've been on so many different things that literally I overthink every aspect of my ingesting of food. Um, and I'm thankful for this food and I, I believe that my body has the ability to handle whatever I'm putting in it. In the most optimal and efficient way for me. Does that mean I'm going to sit around and eat Twixes all day? No. I already know that too many carbohydrates bothers my body. So, I like, don't have a ton, but I don't eat a lot of bread, you know. Let's just go back here.
You know what kind of cereal I love is Pebbles. Yeah, but sometimes, I, guys, there's times when I uh, literally won't eat until 4. I'm not hungry until dinner. And that's okay, too, you know? Yes. I normally take everything. Diving with kids. Welcome. I think that's the first time I've seen you or said your name. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I normally leave a lot of stuff. And actually, as more time goes on, I've had to... The other day, I was really pumped because everything I found that was in that bin, I took it. Because I knew people that, like, names started popping in my head. And I knew that the things that I had picked up there were for certain people. And for the House of Hope, excuse me. I'm going to go get um, some sour cream. Hold on one second. I already have it up, I already have it up here. He's a big boy, Julie. Yeah. So, yeah, I do leave a lot now. Let me see. Let me come back. Right. Yeah, Heather. Welcome. Yes, I do believe that. On the inside, you are a beautiful person, daughter always. Aw, thanks. That's my mother-in-law. Thanks. Thanks, Patty. I almost called you Nana. <laughs> That's funny. When I wait all day to eat, I figure on those days my body is able to burn some extra calories for me. You know, a lot of people say when you're fasting, um, uh, your body goes into autophagy, your cells. Um, yeah, so I do leave stuff for other divers because guess what, guys? I was getting to the point where I was just really overwhelmed. See, this is what I'm eating right now. And that's okay. I got tortilla chips and some. Of, I made myself a quesadilla, which I love making those. I don't know why. And there's 99-cent um, mozzarella sticks at the uh, Sonic right now. Limit five. So you can get five of them if you have, like, a big family or whatever. And they're only 99 cents. They're so good. There was four. I ate one already. I went in the car. I couldn't help myself. And I took some to my hubby because he told me about it. So, and I've got sour cream. Okay. At first, when I first started diving, guys, I literally would take everything because... I didn't know that there was other divers, really. You know what I mean? Like, I, I, I didn't know, and I didn't want it to go to waste. But then, I had too much stuff, guys. Too much stuff to go through. Good morning, Pauline, deep diving in Cincinnati. Hi, Wanda Bake. Oh, how do you say that? Beaker? Ba biker? Holly? Wanda. I like that. Patricia, my mother-in-law, she's on. Everybody say hi to my mother-in-law. She's on my live. Pauline. Yeah. I, so I don't take everything now, guys. And some people might say that that's not good, but I just can't take everything. You know? And at first, and then I was like, oh my gosh, okay, well, I, I got to take everything, make sure it gets donated. Guys, I don't have enough time in my day. You know, like, I, I, I donate everything that I can when I can. You know, and I just try to wait for the impulse instead of, I wasn't following my intuition. So, mm, they're really good. They're normally like, you know, stringy when they're, when they're warm. But it definitely is what's on the inside. I just, you know, one of my main reasons for wanting to lose the weight and one of my main reasons... I guess I always, it wasn't necessarily about how I looked. I mean, of course, who doesn't like to feel really good about themselves, you know? But, like, I've had surgery on both my knees in my lifetime. I recently think that I injured my ACL in my left knee again. And uh, I don't have medical insurance. So the more weight that I have on, it's just like, it's a lot to carry around. But it's all mentally. 
It's all mental. Um, because I've got well-being in me right now. Like, I need to focus more on my well-being. And then it's coming to me and it's available. Like, my heart is beating. My organs are functioning. My, my body's taking care of things. When I, when I drink water, my body takes it in, does what it needs, and I go to the bathroom. You know, like, there is so much well-being inside of me. Instead of focusing on not having well-being and thinking that I need to do something to have well-being, if I just maybe focus on the fact that I do have well-being streaming to me and I am well, I think that's going to help me. Because there's a lot of things functioning really well in my body. Me too. Me too. I've gone out and I've gone out and brought nothing home. I did it last night. I mean, granted, I only went to uh, I only went to Aldi, but the people were still there. Yeah, I mean, it is interesting because I'm I'm coming to find out that yeah, my belief is just like I believe is just a thought we keep thinking, and. I have totally evaluated all of my thoughts around food and my the I the the way I see myself, and they're not thinking those thoughts is only keeping me in that place. Right. Mhm. Yeah. Um. I have noticed focusing on. Loving myself. Well, in the Bible it says, so a man thinks his heart, so he is. So is he. Um, guys, I get down on myself. And when I do that, I'm not good. Mm-hmm. I do that too. Oh, thank you, angel. I eat out of stress. I self-medicate. Um, I do. I I have all those same tendencies. I think like half the battle is if we can just fully accept ourselves for where we're at. Like I almost felt that. Like just accept where I am at, and be thankful for where I'm at because I'm here. Like I could be somewhere not here. You know. And just really nurture myself, just like we know, like when even in our marriage or whatever, when we nurture our spouse, it, it becomes, and we love them unconditionally, like they really blossom. You know, you get to see them blossom and just feel loved. And, you know, I just think that we got to do that with ourselves first, you know, and then the love will just flow out. Thanks, Heather. You know, I don't feel like I'm a good person, though. I always feel like... I don't know. I just always feel like I, I'm letting people down or that I need to be doing more. That's all. Those are all thoughts in my mind. It's a mental thing. Thank you, Brenda. Thank you, Loves to Bake. Wow. Really? Loves to bake. Sit wow. I'm just spit my food out. <laughs> Sorry. I, I, <laughs> I've never had such a compliment. Wow, thank you. Sorry about that guys. I didn't mean to spit my food at, at you. Wow, thank you so much. That's wow. What a compliment. Thank you. Mm. Yes. I lost my dad when I was 15 or 16. And uh, when you're young, like, you want answers and you want to know everything. And 
it's just I went down a trail of self-medication. I was self-medicating myself. It just really didn't. It's and still to this day. It don't work for me. But I still do it. I don't know why. To escape, I guess. They're 99 cents today at um, Sonic. Do I say that, guys? I do, don't I? I say, it's okay. Oh my gosh, I do say that all the time, don't I? I talk to myself. <laughs> That's funny. Oh, I'm sorry. I know that's not easy. Oh my gosh, you guys, that is so funny. But kind of the cool thing about saying that is like right there, you stop the mom you like stop the momentum because you can feel the feeling of upset coming to you and when I say it's okay it kind of eases it so, like and just redirects I can get myself redirected back on <laughs> me too you know what I say a lot too is um, everything's always working out for me uh, and I'll say um, there's nothing serious going on here uh, and I'll, oh, and I'll say, I can handle this. I can handle this. There's nothing serious going on here. Cause really guys, I mean, we're still just like big kids and we still can just play like big kids and have fun. I mean, there's a time for serious things, obviously, but really what is serious? You know, I think I need to loosen up a little bit sometimes and not worry so much. Good morning. How are you? Yay. Are you sick? Loving my juice. I'm glad. Alicia, she's on there. She is the one that received the apple juices. I knew they were for her when I seen them the other night when me and Stevie went out diving. Oh my gosh. And I was like, yes, yes. Yeah. You're right. Bob roll with the punches. Hi, huh, Doobie. Well, I guess we didn't get too bad of a thunderstorm. Angel, I'm so glad about that. True. True. You know, sometimes I wonder, though, what really is death? You know? I, I, I found myself so afraid of it that I was like, I want to get to know it because it's a part of the process. I don't think we need to be scared about it. Um, I just don't think we understand it. And that's why it makes it scary. You know? But I find myself... I really do think when anxiety comes, it's coming for a reason. I really haven't figured it out yet. Every emotion has its purpose. But I just haven't figured out. So I get I get afraid of it. And I get afraid of having more anxiety. And then that creates more of it. I'm thankful for you guys too. I do love our community. I love feeling like I can be open about stuff and just talk about stuff. Oh, everybody, I forget, say hi to my friend Alicia. She lives around here, and she just hopped on. She's the one I gave the apple juice to. I forgot to tell you guys. But I'll make her feel good. Prehistoric. Wow. I'm going to have to look up those words. I know prehistoric, but and I've heard the other one. What does that mean? Like, I'm stuck in the past, in my mind? Do 
there's good news though, guys. The older we get, the more we're learning. And I really believe that um, the emotions that come to us are, are like, like a GPS navigational system, kind of. Or maybe not that. Maybe that's not a good way of putting it. But like, okay. Abraham Hicks uses this one analogy. I don't know if it's an analogy or not, but like when you're driving down the road on the highway, you know how there's those rumble strips on the side of the road? And so you're going straight on the highway. And if you veer to the right, it'll start to go, you know, if you're like, if you're getting to be off the road, it'll go do, 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 and you'll be like, oh, okay, let me get back in lane. And I kind of think our emotions can be like that for us if we try to understand them and not afraid of them. But my emotions, they're so big, man. They scare me. And so maybe, I don't know, maybe instead of allowing the emotion to come so I can feel it so that I know what what's going on then I like hide and run from the feeling and try to drown it or something I do that with alcohol right other parts of our brain because the danger wasn't the same. Okay. Bye, Brenda. I love you. Have a good one. Comments go down so quick. Yeah. Um... Wait, I need to go back up. I suffer from ADHD and anxiety my whole life. I'm going to be 40 this year and it's a huge struggle. You know, I don't know what I got. I'm going to tell you something. I have absolutely no idea what I have at all. And I don't even want to put labels on it because the more I focus on what I have like I have like a condition I don't like that because I'm a really big deal with labels I don't like labels it was even bothering me saying that Stevie had asthma um maybe that's denial or I just don't like, I just really don't like labels, you know, because then, okay, like even kids with autism or our children with disabilities and we call them disabled, we basically take away their, like, we don't see their, we don't see, we see them with a, a dis, a condition, a disability. We totally miss their incredible abilities. And it makes me sad. But I feel like that's what labels do. Like autistic children have the most amazing abilities. And so don't uh, all the other children with what we would call a disability or disabled. They're really well able and... They have amazing, incredible abilities. But it's kind of like, I, I've always wondered why, um, you know, people will go to the doctor and be really healthy and well, and then the doctor will tell them they have something, and all of a sudden they're not well.
I'm just good to think I'm excuse me. Oh, let's go get a paper towel. Yeah, that was amazing. Heather, I'm going to look into that. You know, I'm a, I'm a researcher. I'm constantly learning stuff. Um, I love to learn. I, I hated school. Absolutely couldn't stand school. But I love learning, actually. I guess maybe I just like being led by like my intuition. That still small voice that talks to you. Not all the ones, not all the voices like that condemn you and put you down. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the one where you know it's true. Um, it's optimistic. And loving and gentle. Okay, cool. Yeah, Alicia, you always talk stuff. You always talk stuff in a way where I understand it. I like talking to you about stuff like that. I have a friend with autistic child. She said, "Being that girl's mother has changed her for the better." Yeah. <laughs> there you go, Heather. Yeah, I I really have not. I'll get there. Hold on, let me finish the comments. Yeah. You're absolutely right. Yep. Listen, I eventually got tired of the meds, too. And I'm going to tell you something. Let me get some sour cream real quick, guys. Hold on one second, okay? I'll be right back. What are you doing, you sweetie baby? Hmm. So, when, um, hey guys, and if you would do me a favor too, uh, sprinkle a little love on that like button, if you haven't, because it helps me out. I appreciate it. I love you guys for that. Hey, Mom! My mom just got on. That's Kay Ovens, is my mom. So, thanks guys for the likes. I appreciate it. So, yeah, after I had Stevie... The meds, it seems to snowball. Yeah, and you need more for those things. Yeah. Well, it's like you build up momentum where you need to take more and more and more. And I experienced that with, you know, I had, when I had Stevie and it went back to work and I was really stressed out. And literally, I did not feel like myself um, at all. It was probably like a little postpartum. Um, and we just changed, like, a lot of things changed very quickly. 
um, I just, so I went to the doctor and my doctor gave me Xanax bars, right? Well, listen, I was taking like five Xanax bars a day, you know, and I was functioning and I felt better. I didn't, feel, but like, I wasn't all with it, you know, um, like it just, I've tried all the meds I've tried, um, for my anxiety, I've taken all kinds of medications, Xanax, what's the other one, the little bluer one. I've taken all. Of, I've taken all the things. I've taken all the medicines. I've taken. Um, what's the one? For, uh, uh, Adderall for ADHD. Um, and that didn't work out good. So it's just I gotta. I I literally have to handle. Like I I have to handle myself. When these, when, when, you know, when like one of those attacks comes on where you just feel mentally unstable, uh, and not with it and you feel afraid and scared, but you can't like slow down because you got work and gotta get here, gotta get there, gotta get here, gotta get there. Honestly, really what I need when I get to that point is just some time to myself and to like meditate or, um, I need time by myself to restore, like read whatever you want to call it. And, um, it just, it just didn't, uh, you know, sometimes I don't get that and I need to make sure I'm the only one responsible for making sure that I get that. I can't wait for somebody else to give it to me. They're not going to get that. People are not going to, they're not as concerned. Like, you have to say, no, I'm doing this for myself. You know? I'm not so good about that all the time. Yeah. Heather, it feels real good when you take Xanax. You feel fine, but it's like, I couldn't get anything accomplished. And then, when I was on Adderall, I didn't sleep. Like, I was constantly doing something. Like, constantly had to be focused in doing something. And I wouldn't sleep. I'd stay up all night. It just, uh, it was it was a lot for me. It was a lot for me. Those coping strategies just aren't for me. Couldn't do crap and didn't care. Not a good combo. Right. <laughs> yep. I mean, I think maybe they might work for some people, you know? Obviously, there's a business in it. You know what I mean? Like, it's serving people. Some people, it helps them, you know? Me, on the other hand, it just, I'm just different. I'm not different in a bad way, but I just, I have a hard time limiting myself. I find myself taking more than what I should, you know? Um, I really think that, like, I've, I've just gotten to a place where when I sit, for a minute, and in my mind, I daydream. For a second, not daydream, but just quiet my mind. I can get myself in a good feeling place without anything. Literally just using my, just not even using my mind, just being quiet and like, just trying to feel, actually sitting in, in my feeling and, and looking for a feeling, something that feels good. Well, that happens to me all the time. And one of the things that I think about is, like, why did it get all done? Like, it's, like, it's not, there's going to be dishes in the sink sometimes. And there is going to be the car that is filthy. And you, the, the beds are going to be messy. So, like, there's 
everywhere I look around my house, I'm like, I don't even like, my walls need to be washed. Like, it is like, there's stuff on the wall. Oh, I mean, it drives me literally stuff on the doors. It, the house needs to be painted. Those little, those little details drive me nuts. Okay. But like, I got so many other things to do that sometimes I'm like, I don't know. It's like, I'm in a place of learning how to balance my time and, you know, just do what I can. Like I'm a clutter bug. So I get, when we first moved in here, I was not a clutter bug. I had gotten that under control, but then the, the dumpster diving kind of took me back a little bit. So I got to re implement some of the strategies that I had to get myself back down to like, I don't like a lot of stuff at the house guys, but I'm in the process of learning this too, guys. I feel like there's days when I look around, I literally just want to pull my hair out because I feel like all I've done all day is just clean stuff. And I feel like there's more to life than just taking care of stuff, you know, and it drives me crazy. I think that's where the majority of my anxiety does come from, is not feeling like I've accomplished um, things that I need to accomplish. And I, I just look around and I feel like there's so many things to get done. And you know what? This one, what's his name? Alan Watts. Guys, I listened to a lady named Esther Hicks. And I listened to another gentleman named Alan Watts. And, um... A lot of things that they have said have profoundly changed my life and my life experience for the better in ways that I never thought were possible. And he said that one of the reasons why mothers get so upset is because they see in their mind a huge pile of dishes. And like we see all the things at like one time that we need to get done. But like if we can just focus on the one dish that we're holding in our hand that we're washing. The, and we just stay in the present moment with what's right in front of us. But we look at the big picture and we think, how are we going to get this done? You know? Yeah, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Heather, yes. That's a good one. That's a good one, guys. That's a good one, loves to dive. Right? Well, we have choices. We even have the decision to allow it. Like, okay. Every thought that comes into our mind, we can either entertain or let it pass by. When it comes to us, it has to have permission or we have to, like, welcome it in order to engage with it and talk with the thought and create something with it. So when the thought comes that's, like, your house is filthy, um, you know, whatever, we don't have to even entertain it, you know? But just recognizing that in the moment is something that is... I'm working on it. Sometimes... I, I, I don't, I'm just, I'm, it's like I'm unconscious in here, you know, not paying attention, you know, not focusing. And then I allow some thoughts to slip in that are not really, that's not where I'm going. That's not what I want. That's, I don't want to think about things like that. And then I just engage with them and it, and it creates, you know, a little momentum and then more thoughts come in, you know, and eventually I get, I handle it. I don't know if what I said just makes sense to anybody. I'm sorry if it doesn't. Right. Yeah, like, it's like, we literally, though, we do make the decisions. Like, we have free will to do whatever we want. And the thoughts that come to us, we don't have to entertain them. We can just ignore them. And observe them. And most of the time... I mean, we're going to have thoughts all the time. We're just going to. Uh, the Apostle Paul said in the Bible, 
the Apostle Paul said, to, to take every thought captive to the obedience of Christ. So, basically, when I steward over my thoughts, sometimes I just stop. I stop stewarding. That's what gets me in trouble when I drink alcohol. I stop stewarding over my thoughts and it's all systems go. And that never works out good for me. Ever. But so when I take every thought captive, it's not like I'm necessarily... I just, I, I cast it down. Like if it doesn't... If I don't, if it, if it doesn't match up to that true spot, or, then I don't keep it. Um, or engage with it or entertain it. Sometimes I think, like, thoughts are like seeds. tell you one thing though I definitely enjoyed this conversation I've enjoyed engaging with all you guys I think that's another thing too as a mom and in the role that I'm in right now a lot of times I feel like everything's out of control I feel like I don't have control over anything and in those moments of weakness when I'm like, um, which, you know, but like we do have control. We have control to surrender and just allow it to pass and just not engage with it. Yes. Heather, I don't like it when there's weeds in my garden. I had a little, I had a little, some weeds that had to be plucked out this weekend. Not good for me. Good. Loves to bake. I feel better too. I appreciate you too. We are all in this together. We are all in this together. And it definitely makes me feel good. I make my mom feel good too, because. You know, like, I don't go anywhere, really. Like, I don't have... I mean, I've got friends, you know, but, like, I don't... I'm in the mom mode. Like, we're in the mode where... There's not a lot of time for us or, like, whatever. And so this is nice because... I got for me. This is nice because it feels good to know that I'm not alone. And other people share in the same challenges, you know? Sorry, I'm going to lick my fingers. I'm a finger licker, guys. I really do. I think that I just, with the clutter thing, guys, I look at the whole house in a hole. Like, it, the whole thing needs to be decluttered. And... Maybe if I just, like, just do, like, one thing at a time. Like, I could just pick the closet. You know, I don't have to declutter the entire house in one day. It's not going to happen anyway. And, you know, one little thing at a time. One cabinet at a time. Right. Yeah. Um, there's a. I did not know there was a 30 day clutter challenge. Like, what channel do I gotta go to to find this? And I'll go check it out. One of the things that I end up getting into trouble with clutter about is that I I love projects. I love creating things. I love creating. Um. 
I love creating uh, all kind of little, I love crafts, you know, so when I see something, I'm like, oh, that would be a really cool craft, or I want to do this for somebody, or like, and so I'll, I'll hold on to the thing, you know, or the item, but then before you know it, I've got too many items, you know, I guess those are like step one moments, well, I didn't realize that, but I'll have too many items, and I don't have any time to get the projects done. So, what I used to do before was, I had to be a little bit more realistic with myself and be like, okay, Jackie, do you have time to do this challenge? Like, not challenge. Do you have time to do this craft? Like, can you get it done today? If you can get it done today, yes, you can take the item. If you can't get it done today and you don't see it getting done in the near future, right now, then don't take it, you know? So, if I, if I found something that I wanted to create or do something with, I would give myself a day. You know, and most of the time I'd choose no because I didn't have enough time to get it done in the day. And if I can't get it done right now and today, then I'm, you know, that really helped me get rid of a lot of stuff. And also, one of the cool things about purging and, and getting rid of stuff, not getting rid of stuff, but donating things, is like, um, you can make room for different stuff. You know, I try to tell myself, well... You know, first of all, I don't, one of the things I'm shooting for is I don't like picking up stuff all the time. You know, I like to get up and go and do stuff. And, like, I like to be on the go, but I feel like I spend all my time reorganizing and picking up stuff. And it drives me absolutely mad, okay, to the point. And then I get, then I get like this. Then I start being mad at everybody else in the house, okay, because they won't handle their stuff. But I'm still not handling my stuff. How's that one for you? Uh, for honesty, you know? And that's, like, I have to handle my own stuff first. You know? And have my own stuff. But, I mean, really, I mean, the kitchen. I've got to go through the cupboards and stuff. But I really have downsides, personally. Like, I don't have a whole bunch of things, I don't think. But maybe I need to get them all out. Like, Kimaru. On, or What's that lady's name? If it doesn't spark joy. What's her name? Maybe I need to get everything out so I can see it visually. You know? I will do that 30-day clutter challenge. Okay, let me see. You Day one, you get rid of one item. Day two. Wow. Cool. Yeah. Wow. 11-11, you guys. Wow, we are crafters too. I love that. The wind chill is 35 below. Wow, Roxanne. My goodness. Roxanne, I got your email. I didn't realize it was in the Yahoo. Do I have got Yahoo up there for my, um, maybe it is. Maybe I've been checking my Gmail and I got Yahoo up there. But I did get your email last night. Thank you. I'm so excited. I told Stevie that there was a package coming and she was like really excited. Yeah, so, you know, but if we can find a way, this is cool, this is cool. If we can find a way to cra make our craft, creating the space that we want. If we, can shift our, if we can shift our mind frame to the craft being the creation of our home and what we want it to be and look like, if we focus our craft like what we want to create to be the home that we have and the memories in it and the experience in it a loving one and if we can focus our crafting and our focus abilities on making a positive clean space for our family and our loved ones and you know I like cleanliness I I, I like order I really do I like things to be in order you wouldn't know it sometimes coming into my house in the middle of the day. Like, seriously. Okay? You'd be like, oh, okay. You know? But, or maybe you wouldn't. Maybe that's just me. Maybe I need to, maybe there's some judgments that I have that I need to lift up and, and get rid of. You know? We've lived a lot of life and made a lot of um, judgments and determinations and stuff based off things we've, we've encountered. Oh, 
some more crafty stuff. Cooking dinner and digging through the junk drawer. Couldn't believe how much stuff I had that we didn't use. Yeah, listen, I'm going to do it. How about I do it live? How about I do it live every day and I'll show you guys what I get rid of. That would be cool. Would you guys be interested in in um, some live cleaning decluttering videos? If I like literally declutter some stuff? Let me know. Let me know because I was thinking about that today. I was like, you know what? Why don't you just do a live while you're cleaning? You know? I've got stuff over there on the... Um, that's really what's bothering me the most, to be honest. Maybe we could do that right now. Maybe we could... <laughs> me too! I love I love going through people's stuff. I love going through people's stuff. Nothing. Yeah, it's like, listen, there's, th this is, this is one of the reasons why, okay, like, I have stopped going to Charlotte, and I will again, I will again, but, you know, it's, you get up there, and to drive that far up there, and then come home with nothing, it's like, dang, and you spent the gas, you know, so basically what I've done for myself is I've kind of like, where do I have to go today? And I will, except for the places that are, like, right down the road, like, Dollar General for me is right down the road. Um, you know, there's places that are, like, really close that I can go to on a daily basis if I want to, and it's, like, hardly no gas at all. Ooh, jeez, my knee. Um, but the other ones are further away, and, you know, maybe I can go to them, like, once a week or something, you know, for fun. But honestly, like... For me to go every day, I, I, it was wearing me out. It was wearing me out. And some days I'd find nothing, you know, but I did find a lot of stuff, though, guys. Yes, and that's okay. Wow, that is so cool. I love crafts. I love craft supplies. Me and Stevie love doing crafts. Um, don't get down on yourself if you don't find stuff in the, in the dumpsters. Maybe just... Maybe if it's bothering you or if you feel like it's bothering you when you come home with nothing, you know, just try to go to the ones past where you where you got to go for the day. Wow, that's a really good idea, Heather. That's a really good idea. Yeah, because I really do need to. There's so many things. And then... The dumpster dive and just took me into... I want to have a yard sale. I'm going to wait for it to be nicer. And I'm going to try to have a yard sale down at the bottom there. And just, you know, see if I can get rid of some stuff that way. I still have all that Halloween stuff, guys. You know? Which will be cool because I can do like... Oh! If you have not entered into my um, mystery box giveaway, then please go to... Um, you'll, you'll see it. I'm holding a box in the video. Okay? It's my giveaway, and go enter it. You just have to comment. You have to like, you have to subscribe, and you got to comment. Got to make sure you're subscribed and comment. And I'm going to do the drawing. I'm not sure yet when. Uh, maybe next week. So make sure you go enter that. And tell your friends to, too, because there's some great stuff in the box. I would be really excited to get a box like that. So let me put this back down. Yeah, I guess while we're sitting here, you know what I can do? Hold on, let me go take my food to the kitchen. I'll be right back.
I was thinking, thanks guys, sorry about that. I was thinking, thanks for waiting patiently for me. I was thinking, I'm on charge because my phone, I didn't plug it in last night, which is fine. Oop. Check out my butterflies, guys. They're actually like real metal and beads and stuff, but I think I'm going to switch it up this year. Um, I don't know if that was a good idea. Let me see. I was thinking while I'm sitting here, I might make make some flower pens because um, Valentine's... Look, this is a clutter spot, okay, guys? Let me see if... Let me actually do it like this. Let me switch it around. This is a clutter spot, okay? Let me just take you and show you. Y you know what? We're just. I'm just going to show you around, okay? I'm just going to show you certain clutter that's bothering me, okay? Obviously, like the majority of... Books, I, I do have books that can get rid of. I got to go through there and look through all that stuff. I mean, my husband loves these DVDs and we can't get rid of them. I've gotten rid of a lot of mine, which I'm actually sad I got rid of them. But so I can clean this up and, and get rid of some stuff. So I had my plant. It was beautiful. Love that plant. Oh, buddy. Yeah, buddy. It's my closet, guys. This is going up on the wall. Check them out. Aren't they pretty? So, yeah, this is my closet, which is like, you know, it's like the coat closet part, okay? But th these all got to go back to Spectrum, all those boxes right there, because we don't end up, we don't need the, to have the, um, we don't need to have the, what you call it. So, this is my living room area, okay? And that's, that just became cluttery not too long ago. I brought in that big box, oh, and I've got my, well, we'll just do a video. I don't want to talk about it because it's something special I'm going to do. But all those pens right there, I'm coming back to that place. I'm coming back to that place. All right. And this is the bedroom. All right. And these are blankets and stuff over here. They're, they're stacked neatly. And the pillows are, pillows are actually supposed to go on the bed. This is so cute. Look, I found this in the dumpster. It still has a tag on it. Stevie got it. So let me put my pillows on my bed before I forget. So, here we go. All right. So, that's there, but that's okay. I'd like to do something different, but I don't know what to do, you know? And then this closet here, which was pretty clean for the most part, but I brought some stuff home, and I put the pillows from the couch in there, and it just is not as... I mean, it's not that bad. If you take out that comforter set and stuff, under the pillows are just some of my um, husband's car hearts and stuff and sheets to our bed. Look at Stevie put that there. There's Doobie's bed. I got that at a Petco. Brand new. Nothing wrong with it. Zipper. Zipper's broken. That's all. And then if you go into the kitchen here, I just could really do some stuff with my cupboards. Like they always end up looking like, come on, guys. You, you don't even know what's in there. You know what I'm saying? It just gets like that. I'm telling you. I don't even know how it happens. How does this happen, guys? How does it happen? It's just like you start shoving stuff in there, and it just gets nuts. So I'm just being honest and vulnerable right now, guys. I'm not being vulnerable, but I'm just being honest. I got stuff down here. I got stuff down here, which, I mean, these things need to be here, you know? But, so, and then over here, I've got my potatoes in the back there, and then some bread and stuff. And then I'm pretty much like, you know, filled here too. So, I'm not sure. And there's my air fryer, which really needs to go on top of the fridge because, look, I can't, this, all this stuff's got to go. I, I've got to find a different spot. And then up there too, drives me nuts, both the places. And then this thing gets all backed up with stuff. In this basket, it's just like, um, you know, I put a little bags on here for when I go out, and then you've got, like, your scarves and stuff in that basket. Here's some dog treats, and then this is where the laundry detergent goes. And that thing, I've got to put this on Stevie's car. i got a couple things in here, like this lint thing, some boogie wipes. But Sean made this table for me. How cool is it? It puts the trash cans underneath it, and then this is actually the recycling spot, and he made it out of pallet. Isn't that neat? He made it out of pallet, and then the trash can goes under here. 
And then the recycling is back there for like bottles and stuff like that. So that's just some of my clutter, guys. That's just some of my clutter. And let me check the comments here. I haven't done that. All right, let's see. Hey, Grab It, how are you? Welcome. Let me see. Yeah, that would be nice. I'm gonna. I, well, I do. I've got. I found one of them on the side of the road. Check out this shoe basket, guys. I found that on the side of the road. You're right, Heather. Yeah, we actually. My husband plays guitar, but I also play guitar. I prefer bass guitar. Um, but yeah, my husband plays. We all play. I play violin. That's another thing. Like one. Of, that's one of the biggest things that bothers me, guys. Is like honestly, I want to be like doing stuff that I I when I I find when I have too much stuff in the house and I got too much clutter, then what happens is I don't spend time on my talents and things that I've been given to do, which I really enjoy doing. Let me get some of these flowers. I told Stevie that I had flower pens for each one of her classmates and then her teachers too. So I figure while I'm talking to you guys, oops, Tootie, I figure while I'm talking to you guys, I'll do that. How is the lighting? Not good. I feel like it's, maybe if I open this different, or maybe if I close it, close it, no, ah. sorry. There we go. That's cool. Maybe get her a keyboard. Or get her a little guitar, you know? Why is the lighting so bad? I'm going to have to move probably. Let me see. What about this way? Let's try like this. Is that better? It's a little bit better. Yeah, lessons are really expensive. Heather, you're right, because honestly, it's okay. It's all right. You know, it's just like, okay, all right, maybe this is what does it. You know what? It, like, comparing myself to other people. Like, I'm just not this super clean freak girl. Like, I like things to be neat and orderly, but I can also handle it to a certain extent when it's not. But maybe when I start comparing myself to other people, and I think, oh my gosh, I'm supposed to... I don't know, you know, like you see a glimpse of somebody on YouTube or on television or something, and you're like, oh my gosh, they're so tidy, like I'm not that tidy, you know, <laughs> you know, I don't know, maybe it's like comparing ourselves to other people. Like what is the standard of tidy and clean? But, yeah, I'm going to do that challenge, though, for sure. I'm definitely going to do that challenge. Uh, let me see. I'm definitely going to do that challenge. What is it, the 30-day decluttering challenge? And you just do, I'll, I'll look it up. And then you said you do, like, one item the first day, two items the second day, three items the third day. That's really cool. I like that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, you guys, I'm sorry. I'll hold it up. While I'm sitting here and talking to you, I was just making some flower pens. Stevie has, um, well, it's Valentine's tomorrow. And I'll probably just do some random acts of kindness tomorrow, too. Maybe I can video that. Uh, 
So when you're making these pens, I don't know if any of you saw my video about my pens. These are a real cheap, easy, inexpensive craft that you can do. And I find lots of flowers in the, um, I find lots of flowers in the trash, guys. At craft stores. Where did I find all those? Family Dollar, maybe? I can't remember. Um, yeah, go ahead. What is it? So, um, you cut with, you have to use, um, these pliers here, or like, they're like cutters, maybe. Oh my gosh. Oh. Okay, it's so funny that you said this, because literally, I was just looking this up the other day. And I, well, I started thinking of channeling, like thinking about channeling and what a channel does. Like, what is a channel? If you actually look at what a channel does, like in water, it gives you a whole different perception of, of what a channeling is or what it might be. And um, I do, I do, I am coming to... Um, I'm coming to kind of think that maybe that's, I don't, maybe some of the things and emotions that I've experienced are actually because of, of that, or maybe, um, yeah, I don't, I do, I do believe, I do believe in them, yes. And I'm coming just to be cu more curious about it because, um, you know, my whole life, you, you, you grow up thinking scary stuff about ghosts and um, other things. And then you're told that everything is of the devil, you know, and that you can't like, don't talk to, you know, I mean, even little children, they see, I'm telling you what, one day, this was, this was the most um, profound, not profound, um, this was the this was really drew my attention a lot. The, like it was maybe six months ago. I, I don't know the time frame ago that it was, but I was sitting in Stevie's room with Doobie and Doobie looked up. Okay. Well, he was sitting on the bed with me and he looked up like somebody was walking by and he followed them like that. And I knew he seen something. I just couldn't see it with my physical eyes and I didn't feel scared and I didn't feel bad. It was just like really weird, you know, or whatever, not weird, but like just different. I was like, wow. Wow. You mean your daughter? Okay. Your, your, okay. Your girlfriend. Wow. That's really cool. What does she experience? Like what? Does she have anxiety and stuff like that? I heard somebody the other day say that um, one of the things that, because uh, I started looking up mediums and stuff like that, and hey, Rosalie, welcome back, girl. And she said that, um, she said that one of the things that she experienced is anxiety and fear, um, but really all that that was, was, um, spirits trying to communicate, um, and coming through to communicate. And that's the feeling that you have. And what you have to do is actually like build a boundary. Um, because in like, so that it's not just, we're not open for business 24 seven. Okay. Like there's a time and a place and you know, you have to ask permission. Um, you know, and so that was something that I was like, wow, maybe the big scary emotions that I have are actually happening to me for a reason. And maybe I'm not crazy. Maybe. <laughs> wow. Yes, we do.
from her room. Described a man she saw. Wow. Yeah, but but how neat though. What if what if what if what if just what if we've just kind of trained ourselves to believe that the non-physical is scary, but it's really not. Like, we're just in physical form in here right now, you know? What if it's not so scary, and, and what if we can communicate? And, um, you know, like, I'm just asking myself certain questions about being afraid and things like that. Because when I was Stevie's age and I went to school, oh my gosh, the stomach aches I, I would get. I mean, I, I just, I felt emotions that I have never, I'd never felt before and I was away from my mom. So I was scared because I felt all these feelings that, um, I would think all these, I was just, it was scary. It was huge emotions and I had no idea what to do with them and uh you just feel kind of almost out of control and not out of control physically but just your mind it, and you feel like um then once you're scared you get more scared and uh you, you see how i'm doing this i'm just wrapping around like this and you get real good at it after you keep practicing you know and you make them look real sharp like you know but yeah Yeah, because, yes, because we have limiting beliefs that, first of all, you got people telling you don't. You, you got people telling you that what you're feeling is not correct. That's huge. And that you should be feeling another way. So you start to reject your own emotions. And um, we, get hard, we get hardened, too, you know. It's like we're not as open to things because we shut it down. We shut it down because of fear. And, uh, you know, the, even the Bible says to be like a little child. Well, like children, they think things are funny, you know, they think things are funny and they, they think that, um, you know, they think that, yeah, I mean, that's another thing, but I'll get back to it. They play and they observe and they see things totally different than we do, um, because they have not yet had the time to, um, you know, they, they don't have all those limiting beliefs yet. And I hope that they don't get them, you know. That's why I like to stay unconditional. It's possible. But, um, yeah, like, I totally disregarded my emotions from a really young age. And, um, and because I was told, we're taught to behave. We're taught to behave. And I'm not downing it at all, you know. But we're, we are taught to behave. Um, everything we go through happens for a reason. But as we're growing up, we're taught to behave in school, you know. Um, you know, you can't get upset. That's considered a temper tantrum, you know. And so anytime you're upset, you can't express yourself because you're going to be told that you're having a temper tantrum. And it just gets to a point where you hold it all in, you hold it all in, you hold it all in. And I honestly think that's the reason why a lot of people are addicted to medicine. And not addicted to medicine, but like, a, like have addiction problems where they can't get a grasp on it and they can't get control of the addiction because um, they just, they're trying to do anything they can just to feel good. And I think that's all what we're really looking for is to feel good. You know, why do we want things? So we'll feel better. Why do we want a new car? So we'll feel better. Why do we want uh, whatever? So we'll feel better, you know? But I think that the feeling better... Um, has to just happen first inside we find a way to feel better no matter what you know in that contentment yeah love you mom I'm not I and my mom is such a good mom I love my mom so much she has been amazing she's been my rock and I just love her so dearly. So anything that I say, Mom, I'm not coming down. Um, I'm just saying how, what, you know, what society uh, 
what society teaches us and what we learn, you know, and I try, I really honestly, I try not to, um, at all, when I find myself starting to nitpick Stevie, I back it up, I back it up, because, and some people might say that that's not disciplining her properly, but I always want to make sure that my interactions with her when I'm talking or when I'm correcting, or not, not necessarily correcting, but letting her know we don't, we don't do that, um, I don't, sometimes I'm afraid to say anything, I'm afraid to say what I really think, or, and it's just because I'm afraid of getting in trouble, or I'm afraid of, um, being rejected, or, you know, whatever, but the first thing that comes is always what's really there, you know, the first thing that comes to mind is that's the one, in my mind, anyways, and I should share it, but sometimes I'm like, no, that's, that, I can't, <laughs> I don't know, but you know what? It makes me feel better, too. Like, I don't get them done. I, I do them sometimes. Like, mine right now, they're not, I mean, they're not bad, but they're not done up or anything, you know? But I don't know, because it just makes us feel fresh and clean and, like, put together. I don't know, maybe because we feel like we're more beautiful or... I don't know, it's like maybe pampering. I'm not sure. I'm really not sure why. That storm finally passed. Why do you think? Yeah. Why? What should I bake, Mom? I know I gotta bake something for Sean for Valentine's. That's all I know that I could do that would he would really like. I really enjoyed talking to you guys today. I'm glad that you guys came on. I do feel good about our conversation today. Let's see. So these is, this is what they look like, guys, after you're done. They're really cute and adorable. Like, look how nice they are. It's really sharp. I try to get it to where the swirls are, like, nice. You see what I'm saying? And they're cute. So one each student at Stevie's school is going to get one flower pen. And then I'll probably do, like, a little... Um, you know, like a mixed little bouquet and put some ribbon on it for both of her teachers. So that's what we'll do. I think I need 20 of them. But, and I, I, I'll bake something today, Mom. Parenting thing always confused me. If I tell an adult to shut up, it's not acceptable. If I hit an adult, if I hit an adult, I go to jail. If I ignore an adult, I damage the relationship, but people are okay doing it to the kids. Yeah, I, yeah, I mean, well, it's like, this is another thing, too, that I think is really interesting. It's like, I'm still learning. I do not know nothing. Like, honestly, I do not know. I, I don't know a lot of stuff, and I'm constantly learning. And so, you know, I, Stevie's learning, and, like, I'm not above Stevie. Actually, I've learned more from Stevie than I think that I've done for her. So it's like I, I, if I humble myself, I'll learn from her. And also, you know, I want to allow her the space to mess up and make mistakes, you know, because if I don't do that, then she won't, you know, it's like I don't want her to be afraid to make moves because she's afraid of making mistakes. Like mistakes are going to happen. And I'm going to be here, you know, to help you through it. If you, if she, if she were to go out and hit somebody or something like that, like, I want to be here to help her and to, you know, I think sometimes I think of Stevie like a sister, not just like my, like my girl, like my child. Like, I want to love her like a sister and I'm her mother. And of course I, um you know, have to correct her and help guide her, but she's got her own intuition. 
And if I'm constantly on her and like mm, 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 telling her what to do, she's going to, what happens is I think we, what I did anyways, is I stopped completely listening to my intuition when I was a child and I just started, um, I, like I, I, what other people told me was more important than what I felt or thought inside. And, um, that's dangerous, you know, because you got to follow your intuition. All right, girl, you get crafty today. Welcome everybody. What else do I got here? I do these yellow ones. These are $3 ones. So they're a little bit more sturdier. You know, there's other ones that are like cheaper, but I'm I want to use the good ones. It's Valentine's Day. So, I'm thankful for all of the things that I went through and experienced as a child because they've all helped me. There's nothing that's ever wasted and nothing that I ever go through that's not going to help me mature and understand um, things, you know, as time goes on. But I'm excited about what there is to learn out there. And um, I'm just excited... Because I don't feel as crappy as I did two days ago. Because I was not feeling well a couple days ago. But I'm feeling better. That it happens sometimes. And the more times that it happens, like, the more I learn. And it's funny because a storm was coming. A storm, a physical storm was coming. And it came here. And I should have known that there, that, that I should have known. I even think, I was like, there's a storm coming. And I mean like a mental one, you know, when that physical storm is here. And I didn't associate the two, but next time I will. Just kind of try to pay more attention. Yeah, that's really cool. That's really neat. I love that. That's really cool. That is really cool. Oh, shoot. Plug in my phone here. That's really, really cool. Yeah, I, I, I would be excited. To ask, does she ever get on here? I'd be excited to ask her some questions. I'd be excited to ask her some questions. Oh, we, well, okay. Check this out. All right, check this out. I don't know if I shared this on here yet or not. Okay, so I had this experience happen the other day where um, I, this is the first time I ever felt like this in this strong of a way, and this happened to me like this, but I was, um, ask your girl, and you tell me the next time we're on together if this is something that she would experience, okay? I have not communicated with my dad like obviously he's been gone for a really long time I had a dream in a dream not too long ago where I talked to him and like I was able to release all the things and tell him everything that I needed to say and it felt really good and I felt lighter when I woke up so I know that it really happened and I communicated with him then the other day I was looking at the towels trying to decide what towel I wanted to use and which I do that sometimes because we got bigger towels and little towels and we don't have the best towels in the world you know but I'm thankful for the ones we do have but I was looking trying to decide what I wanted, and then all of a sudden, I got this, and I, I, I'm interpreting it into words, but it was just the perception, I perceived it, and this was the translation of the perception was, um, hey, do you remember, do you remember when um, I used to get mad at you because you would take the biggest towel and leave me the smallest towel, and I was bigger, and you were smaller, and I used to get really mad about it, and I had not thought about that at all like I I didn't even know well also a flash came into my mind of a childhood and my dad right when I perceived that thought and then I was like well I'm gonna have to ask my mom because I literally did not remember if that was a thing where my dad used to get mad because my dad was heavier and we would take the big towels and leave him the small towels you know so I asked my mom the other day, and I was like, Mom, did Dad used to get mad at us about taking the towels, you know? And, you, you know, not, like taking the biggest ones and then leaving him the smallest ones? And she was like, yeah. It was like a big deal. 
Like, it, you know, but I really didn't remember it. Probably it didn't even enter my memory since, like, the last time my dad probably yelled at me about the towels. You know, so it's not like something that I thought about. It totally struck me sideways. Like, I was like, I don't know. And then, and then after my mom confirmed that, I knew that that was my dad talking to me, which I had never experienced in such a strong way before, which was really exciting. And, um, like, he was really talking to me, you know, and I, I was like, wow, that's really cool, you know, and then that got me thinking about other stuff. Yeah, there's only three left. Only three left right now. I lost everybody, maybe with the medium talk. <laughs> it's okay. I don't care. It's all right. But... Um, where's my pens? So, yeah. Root call. Roll call. Okay. So, uh, okay. Who is that? Who is the roll call? But yeah, I know that like, I know that like, if I were to try to talk to uh, like family or anything about, um, like my, like talking about that or like any type of saying you're a medium or can translate or, you know, talk to, you know, I, I just don't, it would not go over well. I'm just not going to have that conversation. Roll call to see who's left. Oh, how do you do that? Roll call. Who's left? Who's the other third person? Can you comment? We've got three people on here. I'm curious to say, hey guys, what? Where's Sandra been? Does anybody know? You remember Sandra, who would get on here all the time? I'm gonna have to send her a letter because I don't know. I have not heard from her. Let me see. Did anybody comment? Who the third person is? Maybe. I don't know, but when I when I first come on, it shows up um, zero. So, I don't know. But, yeah, that's really neat. Uh, you should ask your, you should ask your, um, oh, jeez. Let me see. Diving with Kids, what is your name again? Diving with Chris. I'm sorry. What is your name again? I'm sorry. If I've asked you that more than one time. You should ask her about me. Because I would love to know more about what the heck's going on. Welcome number four. Got four people in the room. That's all right. Five people in the room. That's what I'm talking about. Just making some flower pens for Valentine's tomorrow. And wow, guys, we've been on for an hour and 34 minutes. I am probably my husband's going to be coming home for lunch here in a little, probably a couple minutes. I probably should get off. Um, let me see. Yeah, it just was, um, it was a different kind of experience that, um, there's always chatter, you know what I mean, and stuff like that, and, um, so, I just ignore a lot, you know what I mean, like, I do a lot of ignoring, um, the chatter, you know, and just focusing and ignoring the chatter and focusing on what I'm doing, uh, but, that was different, you know, and a lot of times I don't even, I can tune the, I block the chatter out. Hey, how are you, Karen? Yes, I am. How are you? Lovely. <laughs> yes, I am. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I've seen that too. Seeing, I got you, girl. 
Lord's Prayer. I love the Lord's Prayer. I love the Lord's Prayer. When I get afraid, uh, um, when I get afraid, um, I start to recite that. Because, and you know what, if, if, if you dissect that, um, wait, hold on, we're talking about Lord's Prayer, which, which, which makes me feel good too, but Psalm 23 makes me feel really good. Because if you take Psalm 23 and you dissect it and you like find out all the, maybe I'll do a thing, maybe I'll do like a little thing on that. It's been so helpful to me. But listen, my husband's home for lunch, so I'm going to go ahead and get off and spend a little bit of time with him. And then maybe I'll get back on in a little bit. All right? Let's do a little, little, I'm going to do a little pick up, a little clean or something. Get dip. No, really? R do. 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 All right, I love you guys. Thanks so much for being on here. I'll be on again today. I'll see you in a little bit. Bye.